Hello everyone, uh, my name is Stefan Chapman and I am the Vice President at Euro Petroleum Consultants. We are a consultancy, independent consultancy, active in the oil, gas and petrochemical sectors. And we are also organizers of the upcoming ESF MENA event, which is a new regional conference following the success of our inaugural Energy Sustainability Forum, which we held in a virtual format earlier this year. By focusing on decarbonization and sustainability in the downstream industry, ESF MENA will support the collaborations, the discussions and the development of a sustainable energy future in which the Middle East downstream industry continues to play a leading role. So today I'm very honored to have with me one of the forum's keynote speakers, Alicia Eastman. Alicia is the co-founder and the president of Intercontinental Energy. They are the world's largest developer of green hydrogen and green fuels production facilities, which will decarbonize multiple energy intensive and carbon producing sectors. We're delighted to be able to catch up with her today ahead of our event to discuss on some of the key topics facing our industry in its journey to a more sustainable future. So Alicia, a warm welcome to you. It's a pleasure to have you with us here today. Hope all is well on your side. Thanks for having me. So if I may, I'd like to dive into our first uh, discussion point this morning. Um, over the last few months, we've witnessed many of the Middle East producers begin their pivot to sustainability, uh, including some really exciting project announcements. In your opinion, how well positioned is the region to adapt and what do you believe are the main opportunities available for the region by reducing its carbon emissions? Well. I, I think that the, the region is blessed with resources. So um, it's been a pretty obvious uh, fact that solar is available almost everywhere in the Middle East and uh, uh, MENA areas. Um, but there are also wonderful areas with wind uh, and that have this diurnal profile of a high wind at night and high solar during the day. And that's the reason that we selected our project in Oman. Um, because it is really outstanding in the terms of the world in having this resource. And if you have these, you also have these conditions for these resources. So large uniform pieces of land that are on the ocean. So you have a source of water, you have a source of export, you have um, scale. And, and all of these things will help the region to help the world to scale and bring down the pricing of hydrogen and hydrogen products, ammonia or any other um, products that are created from hydrogen. Um, so I think that the Middle East is actually one of the most important regions for this industry in terms of the production side and the very important task of reducing the cost of these uh, of, of hydrogen and hydrogen products. No, I totally agree. I think there's a lot of opportunities for the region. Uh, I think they're definitely well placed to be leaders uh, during this energy transition. Um, you've briefly mentioned, but if I could turn our attention specifically to intercontinental energy and your role within the industry. So you briefly mentioned it. You recently announced a project with OQ and Enatech. Uh, which is set to make Oman a world leader in green hydrogen and also green ammonia. Um, what makes this project and Oman unique? If you can just expand a little bit on that. Sure. I, I think that I alluded a little bit to the diurnal profile, but this is extremely important. Having the high sun during the day and having high winds at night so that they're not coming on at the same time. This gives you the, ex the maximum capacity factor. And when you have that high capacity factor, you can run your downstream equipment much harder. That means that you're getting the most out of your capex. And that means that the price of your product is gonna be lower than any other project um, worldwide. So uh, Oman, this site that we've selected with our partners is competitive with any site in the world. Um, this is really a fantastic uh, resource um, and it's going to be uh, wonderful for the community around it in terms of jobs and, and even producing desalinated water, um, excess water for, for, for the location. Thank you very much. So it kind of reunites all the different aspects to make it perfect for that type of project. Um, if we look at the, the Gulf's strategic location a little bit more, it means that the region has the potential to become a global hydrogen champion, if we can say it that way. 
But what is needed in terms of incentives, um, also we know that policy frameworks are important and also infrastructure investment. Uh, I think these are all key aspects for any type of project. Well, I think that the key actually lies more with the in order to have the, the production side, you have to have the offtake side. So you know, the, the location in the Middle East is fantastic for both um, North Asia and Europe, which are big leaders in this space. Um, they need to be able to acquire and to buy the, these products. Um, so it's really more of the regulatory um, initiatives, whether it's carrots or sticks on the market side that help drive uh, the market for the projects in the Middle East. Um, so it's it's not so much of the regulations in the Middle East as it is the regulations in Europe and North Asia that are going to drive the, the market. Um, this will create uh, offtake agreements that will underpin the project finance for the projects and and that will make it possible to build the infrastructure and build out what needs to be done on the ground in the Middle East to, to connect to these other markets. Thank you very much. It sounds really interesting. Um, as you can imagine, hydrogen at many of our recent events, whether that's for energy transition or even uh, the downstream industry, the petroleum down industry, is a hot topic of discussion. We've had a number of uh, uh, specialized panels on hydrogen and it's always generated some great discussions. Uh, one point that is regularly uh, mentioned is that despite its potential as a next generation fuel, uh, green hydrogen is considered not yet economically viable and that hydrogen costs in general need to still come down so that it can begin to revolutionize the global energy system. In your opinion, how can companies develop what can be considered a viable business case around green hydrogen? Well, I think um, what you're describing is the reason that intercontinental energy came into this space. Uh, we need scale to get the price down. And having small pilot projects is not going to get the price down. We really need to have um, not just with not just the electrolyzers, although that's a big that's a big um, proportion of the, of the cost. You, and that right now at this very moment, um, but everyone expects that to drop really substantially when you get to any kind of scale. Um, we're talking about a couple gigawatts of scale that's going to drop uh, dramatically. Um, but having projects that are at a large scale, 25 gigawatts, 50 gigawatts, which we just announced as our second project in Australia is 50 gigawatts. This is this creates a, a much less expensive product. You have economies of scale in every way. You have supply chain economies of scale. And adding all those together with that diurnal profile of that great resource um, really gets you the lowest price cost, the lowest cost um, uh, product. And until you get into that neighborhood of, of sort of competing with other possible products that might have carbon or, or other um, greenhouse gas emissions, it doesn't have to be cheaper, but it has to in the same magnitude um, and this is the only way we're going to get there is by scale okay thank you um, and it brings us to the one last question um, thinking about the energy products and the services that the regions consume consumer values as big hydrocarbon producers how can the re region build their options for the future but still using the assets that they have in place uh, what do you see, what do we need to see in terms of uh, cultural and political shifts towards sustainab sustainability and the demand for a low carbon sources of energy? Well, I think to the extent possible, um, most of these countries have been exporters of fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. um, and to the extent possible, they can use renewable uh, upstream resources, wind and solar, for their domestic needs. So electrification of whatever they can locally makes sense, even if they were going to continue to be fossil fuel exporters. Um, however, for the for uh, reaching uh, our 2050 goals or 2030 goals, or you know wanting to have a, a planet around um, <laughs> for millennia into the future, um, we we really think that the fossil fuels need to be replaced. And so the key is to repurpose the skill set, repurpose some of the infrastructure, all of the things that um, that industry provides, but to produce um, hydrogen and ammonia and export that instead. 
So you don't lose your coffers from, from your export of, of energy, but now you can export a green energy. So in, in a way, the Middle East can strike oil twice. And the second time, it's, it's actually good for the world in general because it, it's a green product. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, it's going to be important. There is that drive. There is that willingness to to get to, I think it's a transition. We're going to get to a, a new energy mix. I don't think uh, hydrocarbons will disappear, obviously, but we need to get that equi equilibrium right and that balance right. Um, so it's going to be interesting times ahead. And I think uh, um, it's going to be really interesting working on these types of projects. Um, so I'd like to thank you for your time today, Alicia. It was a real pleasure for me to talk with you on these topics, and um, it was great to have your insight. Um, we look forward to continuing the discussion at ESF MENA later on in the year. Uh, fingers crossed it will be able to be in person, which, uh, which would be great. Um, in the meantime, I wish you a great summer, and uh, please stay safe and stay well. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Very much looking forward to it. Thank you very much.